Jesus. We bless your name, Father. We just thank you, Jesus. We love you, God. You are amazing, Father. You are amazing, God. You're mighty, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, welcome on today to Triumph and Life Church. We just want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. As we go into worship, God, we just want to lift your name on high. Lord, it's always about you, God. It's truly all about you, Lord. Everything we do is for you. So wherever you may be, if you're at home or if you're out in your car, I just want you guys to participate with us and we're going to give God some praise on this morning. Amen. Y'all ready back here? All right. Come on. Come on, clap your hands. Over the horizon, and I'm grateful because of your love. I can face any challenge that comes my way. Only in you, I live, I move, and I have my peace. I surrender my will.
you name above all names. When we call the mighty name of Jesus, that means that that name surpasses everything that we're going through. No matter if you're going through sickness in your body or if your mind is confused, when you call on the name of Jesus, when you call Abba Father, when you call El Shaddai, when you call on his name, his name surpasses all. So this is a new song on this morning. It's really simple. So wherever you are, just join along with us as we go with the song. Amen. Come on, let's have your hand.
Jesus in this place. Come on, lift up a mighty shout. He is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. And we glorify his name. We magnify your name, Jesus. There's none like you, oh God. We glorify your name. Come on and bless his name today. Come on right where you are, begin to exalt him. He is the name above all other names. None of them can be exalted above his name. He sits high and he looks low. He is concerned about you, but he is the great I am. you but I'm excited to be in the land of the living and to know that the blood still works the blood of Jesus it still works I'm so glad that in the midst of my struggles I can call on the name of Jesus and everything that exalts itself against God has to bow down to the authority not by power but not by might but by my spirit says the Lord so I need you to know on this morning I don't care what it looks like I don't care what you've been experiencing all you got to do is call on the name of Jesus my Bible tells me the righteous run in and they are safe. It is safety in the arms of Jesus. There's protection in the arms of Jesus. Every need is met and supplied in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I pray that you feel welcome in the presence of the Lord on today. My name is Pastor Tracy Akins. I'm simply here to welcome you into his presence right there where you are as you enjoy our digital experience today. I pray that you are an active participant, which means that you are lifting your hands. You are exalting his name. You are blessing him for yourself. Although we may be socially distancing, we are spiritually connected on today. And so we are so grateful that you would join us on today in our Triumphant Life E experience where my husband, Pastor Lai Joe Lydell J. Akins is the pastor. And so although you cannot experience us physically, you can always join us here at 11 a.m. on Sundays, as well as you can come back on Thursday and enjoy our Impact Bible Study experience on today. So here at Triumphant Life, we want you to visit our website. Let us know if you're new here. Drop it right there. Somebody in the chat is going to welcome you. But then we want you to hop on over to our, our um website at triumphantlifenj.org <laughs> and we want you to say hey i'm new here so that we can keep connected with you on today triumphant life is a place where we love people love god love people and serve the world amen come on and extend a virtual hug and love on today <laughs> yes sir well happy mother's day y'all all the mothers make some noise
Well, if you don't know already, we are so glad that you made it here to Triumphant Life. And I want to personally wish every mother on today a happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Mother's Happy Mother's Day. Day. Thank you. Thank you. And so we hope those of you that are Triumph for Life members and you registered with us yesterday, you should have got a special delivery from some of our people here. We wanted to make sure that you got something sweet and let you know that we were thinking about you. And so you should have got a special cupcake delivered to you on yesterday as our token of love here to say, hey, Happy Mother's Day to you. But guess what? If you are in our surrounding area, which means you are in our local area right here in New Jersey, like... Um, Monmouth County here in New Jersey and you want something special as well we want to make a special delivery to you on today so would you go to our website at triumphantlifenj.org and would you go and register at our Mother's Day event? And we're going to make sure that something gets delivered to you today. Now, we only have a limited supply. So it's the first, first, come, first serve. it's the first come, first serve. And I believe it's the first 50. Yes. yes, it's the first 50 people that register today. So by the time that this broadcast is over, you need to have already registered. And we're going to make sure that some of our men make a special delivery to you to let you know how much we appreciate you. Right. And so we need to make sure that we get your information and your address. And we just want to extend our hugs of love to you and let you know that we appreciate all that you do, especially nowadays. As some of you, you are being the teacher, the counselor, the principal and everything all at one time. We want to let you know that we are thinking about you. So right now we have a special presentation just for you. So hold on. Don't go anywhere. We want you to hear this. can save her family and prevent disaster. Mom, we're gonna be late for school. I don't think so. Whoa. Experience the phenomenon that critics are calling inspiring. Mom, I can't find number 17. Come on, Billy, dig deep. A lot of fun. Genius. Mom, where's my phone? Table. Keys. Mudroom. Dragon Man. Under the couch between the monkey and the flip flop. How does she do that? Created by God to demonstrate his love with grace, elegance, and poise. Hallelujah. We celebrate mothers on today. But most of all, we came to celebrate the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior, our risen King. He's been our way maker. He's been our protector. He's been our provider. And God, we just want to say thank you on today, Lord, for being all those things and more for us, Lord. You've been things that we didn't even know we needed, Lord. So wherever you are in this moment, as we go into worship, just think about the goodness of God. And even for some of the mothers, when you didn't know how it was going to happen, and you didn't know how things were going to work out, but know that God was making a way out of no way. And that's not just for the mothers, even for the fathers and the parents and guardians that are covering children and protecting them. God was your way maker. God was your provider. God was your sustainer. He was your mind regulator in the midst of the storm. So God, on today, we just want to celebrate you above all things, Lord. For you truly can do the impossible, Lord. So God, we come with our hands lifted to you, Lord. Our hearts surrendered to you, worshiping your name, worshiping who you are, God. In spirit and in truth, knowing of who you are in our lives.
That you're still working, Lord. Even when we can't feel it, and a lot of times 
We want to see the manifestation right away. But we lose hope in the times when we don't see things actually happening. But when we have true faith and truly believe in God and trust in Him with our whole hearts, we know that even if we can't physically see it, we have to trust that He's still working on our behalf. And they said that he still is doing things to work all things together for the good of those who love the Lord. So when we sing this part, it's not just to sing it because it sounds good, but it's to declare that I'm going to believe and I'm going to trust in God no matter what the situation may look like. No matter how bad it feels or how bad it may seem, I know that the God that I serve is still working. The word says that he never sleeps or slumbers, that he's consistently working 24 hours, 24 seven on your behalf. So we sing that part, let it speak to you that God, I know that you're still working for me, Lord. I know you're still working things out that I th didn't think that was gonna happen. The miracles, God, that you said two, three years ago, God, they're still working out for me, Lord. So God, we know you to be a way maker. We know you to be a healer. We know you to be a deliverer, God. But God, I believe on today that someone's gonna recognize that you're still working. You're still working even when it doesn't seem like you're working things out. Even when you think he can't hear you, he hears every prayer. He sees every tear that falls from your eye. He catches every tear. God is still there for you. And he still wants to be connected with you. My God, that is who you are. Help me sing it on today. We make miracle work, promise keep, God in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Say it again. Say, we make we make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Say, way maker, way make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Now come on and just begin to worship the mighty King. Maker, your sustainer, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, we worship you in this place, Lord. We worship you with all that we have on today, God. For you have truly been everything we needed, Lord. But God, we want to make it about you. We worship you even if you don't do another thing for us, God. Even if you didn't do what we expected, God, I just want to worship you in spite of. Because God, we're still called as your daughters and sons, Lord. And we still want to worship you, Lord. And give your name all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good and his mercy endured forever and he deserves all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. I pray that you would open up your mouth just one last time and just exalt him and just magnify him. If you could put your hands together. Lord, you're worthy. Come on, Lord, you're worthy. When I don't see you, you're worthy. Oh, we magnify you. You are a way maker, oh God. In a season where we don't know what to do, God, we trust you. God, we lean on you. God, we give you glory and honor. Cover us in this moment, oh God. This season that we're in, I pray even now, Lord God, that you would watch over but navigate every footstep of the believer's heart on today. I pray, Father, that you would give us boldness, not to be in fear, not to be in doubt, but to declare your goodness because you are a way maker, oh God. So navigate us through these moments as we prepare to go into your word on today. Touch those who will hear and see, Lord God, that they will get advantage point to hear and see you through words spoken on today. Lord, we love you bless you on today, oh God. We give your name all the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. 
series entitled Big Mouth, uh, Mouth Almighty, and so <laughs> Tongue Everlasting, and so uh, the old song, old school song, new school, you might not know that, but uh, we've been talking about Big Mouth, and we've been uh, sharing, uh, last Sunday we talked about the heart element, uh, I did this to myself, this is a heart issue, and we always have to check our hearts, and so today I want to go and talk a little further into this, I want to talk from the title, Viewpoint. Viewpoint, Philippians in the second chapter, 14th verse uh, in the 16 gives us a very uh, uh, a clear picture to Paul writing to some people that had to get a new viewpoint because at tendencies we have, uh, we, we, we struggle with the, the obstacle of complaining. Uh, nobody uh, in particular I'm talking to, but somebody knows what I'm saying, you, you grumble, you you got uh, issues with your mouth in this area. And uh, I want to declare to you that it's your viewpoint that has to shift. And so Philippians 2 and the 14th verse, it says, I'm reading from the NASB version, do all things without grumbling or disputing so that you will prove yourself to be blameless and innocent and children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you appear as lights in the world holding fast the word of life so that you may that you so that in the day of Christ I will have reason to glory because I did not run in vain nor toil in vain this is the word of the Lord thanks be unto God so here's the issue the issue is viewpoint when I thought about complaining and I thought about the grumbling aspect, I thought about there's a great deal of difference between seeing life through a horizontal lens and seeing life through a vertical lens. And God wants us to get a handle on a vertical viewpoint. Because if you can see your situation through a vertical viewpoint, it will shift what you say out your mouth. I mean, and, and I, I begin to think, how, how do I do this? Because... You won't get the viewpoint uh, in living on uh, watching uh, the reality of the TV, the news. You won't get it through reading the paper. You won't get it through watching television uh, or, or binge watching no show. You won't get it through scrolling through the internet. God's viewpoint is different than ours. And it's important that we get the, this viewpoint, but it's going, it's going to benefit us in our hearts and with, when it comes to what comes out our mouths, especially in this season. And so when I begin to de define this, if you can define this with me, viewpoint is a tool from which we can see life, situations, problems, people from many different views. And so when I looked into the text that we were at, I, I had to jump back because Paul was writing to them while being shackled. So he's in shackles telling them, don't complain. He's in shackles then saying to them, watch this in verse 12, he says, so then my beloved, just as you always obey, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and work for his good pleasure. So Paul says, hey, look, even when I'm not there, I'm expecting you to act the same. And that's when I realized viewpoint directs expectation. Most people grumble and complain because their viewpoint is off, so what they're expecting has not been met yet. Okay, I, I know how y'all feeling, just how I was feeling when I was reading it. I wish Paul had made it a little bit more realistic. Matter of fact, I wish he had made it a little bit more down to earth. If he could have said, try to do most things without grumbling and disputing and complaining, I could respect that. If he had just said the word try, I mean, give it a try. Just give it a little try. If you give not complaining a try, but he says all things. 
in all things. And I said, come on, Paul, that's not right. Because sometimes I, I just want to talk about it and I just need to get it off my chest. But the truth of the matter is, yes, you can get it off your chest, but what viewpoint are you coming from? Your flesh or God? Am I seeing it that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose? Or am I seeing it because it's not fair? Because if you're going from the vantage point of it's not fair, boy, you are in for a long life. I began to look at this, and I had to pull up some witnesses. And when I think of viewpoint, I think about one particular story in Exodus and the 14th chapter. It's an interesting story. You know it very well of a people, uh, the Israelites. Um, they, had, they were crying out for God to deliver them from slavery and uh, bondage. And then God raises up Moses and begins to start the process. Y'all know the process. Ten plagues come. None of them get the plague. They, they, they start escaping, and they're running, and uh, the Egyptians are on their tail. God opens up the Red Sea. They walk on uh, uh, solid ground, and as they get across, uh, the ocean closes up and kills all of the ar ar army. I said, oh, they, they have nothing to complain about. They're free. They, I mean, oh, my God, they're free. But then I looked a little bit more. Then they started complaining that they were hungry. And then God said, okay, he gave them some manna. And he said, that, and they called it, manna means, what is this? So if you could imagine, they got manna and they said, what is this? But they ate it. Then they said, we're thirsty. God causes water to come out of a rock. I wish that was it. Their clothes, the Bible says their clothes never wore out. You thought that would be it. Like, I, if all this stuff is happening... But Israelites did the same thing they had always done every time they whined and complained. And the text finds us where in Exodus 14, it says, Moses says, was it because there was no graves in Egypt that, they, they said, that you brought us to the desert to die? They, they were saying to Moses, excuse me. And he said, what have you done to us? Bring us out of Egypt. Didn't we, uh, Exodus 14, 11, y'all there? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. This is the same people that asked to be free. They begged for God to do something, for God to show up. God shows up, and now they don't like the condition to how God shows up. Can I talk to somebody? Because your viewpoint might be wrong. You want God to save your spouse. You want God to save your children. But the viewpoint to how, you, how he does it might not be the way you like it. You want God to shift your situation. But some of us don't like the way God shifts. Because when he shifts, it's oftentimes uncomfortable to us. And so our mouths start speaking about what God did, what God allowed. Okay, yeah, okay I'm sorry. Let's go back to the text. Before I make the, no, 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 I'm on it. I got to go scriptural. I got to go scriptural. Watch this. So Exodus 16, 8 says, you're not grumbling against us, but you're grumbling against the Lord. Okay, okay. So, so I came up with a thought. Your testimony marks your trial of what you're going through, but it needs to declare God's grace. That means I got to be careful about while I'm in my testimony, I am going through what I'm going through, but I'm declaring that God's grace has covered my situation. Can I just tell y'all the season we're in right now? We are in a season of viewpoint shifting. Everything is shifting because uh, I heard someone say, uh, now uh, your sports are not your God no more. You can, you, can, you can watch the reruns, but you ain't watching nothing fresh. The only thing fresh in this season is God. <laughs> the only thing fresh in this season is what God's up to, and so he's shifting us. 
And God has removed so much in this season, and you could be tempted to complain about this season, but God has shifted your time. Amen. You now have time to have dinner with your family. Right. You now have time to pray. Right. You have time to do whatever you really want to focus on. You have time for if you allow it. We're in a season, watch this, of preparation, and the test will be in your attitude and action that will give glory to God. Uh, you know, proper viewpoint is so important. You know, it, 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 when you have the proper viewpoint, you will turn a problem today in a, into a solution for tomorrow. You'll look in your condition and say, you know what? Okay, I, I, I see what I'm in. All right. God, you're going to give me a solution while in this situation right now. Viewpoint will do that. And then you'll start speaking some, some, some vision that you say, God, I see this. And God said, yeah, I gave you that, but I'm going to do exceedingly. All right. All right. Y'all, y'all ain't there yet. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go a little further. I begin to think about how the enemy does. You know what the enemy does to change your viewpoint? He causes doubt. Whenever, whenever Satan wants to change something that God's trying to do, he'll cause you to doubt whether or not progress is going on. And when you start doubting, you start speaking the doubt, not faith. We don't talk about faith when you're in the doubt mode. You start speaking what you're going through from the viewpoint of horizontal, not vertical. Matter of fact, let, let, let's go biblical. Uh, Satan got Eve to doubt the goodness of God because improper viewpoint. She had access to every other, everything in the whole world except for one tree, but her viewpoint could not see that I don't need that tree in order to get. Uh, okay, watch this. Some of us, you don't realize that your viewpoint is messing up where God's trying to take you. And so the enemy will get you to doubt God's goodness and bring about the spirit of complaining in a season that God never left you. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That means um, uh, we have to be able to work on this thing. Can I help you? Can I help you? I'm so excited. Okay, let me help you. Many, there's so many spiritual reasons why you need a viewpoint shift. Because uh, your viewpoint shift will affect your mouth, but affect your heart ultimately. Yes? There's a book by the name, uh, uh, by name of Emotional Intelligence 2.0 by a man by the name of Dr. Travis Bradbury. And he does a phenomenal job. I, 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 and I, I extrapolated three particular small points that I like to kind of just throw at you that he did research on that I don't want to give you all the detail, but just give you the points of what he shared. Uh, he said, first of all, repeated complaining hardwires the brain to do more complaining. I, he, he has all the studies to it. I'm not giving you all the study information. It's in the book. He says, the more complaining, in other words, the more negative you are, the more likely your brain is going to be triggered to continue to be negative. And what it, what it means just as is a kind of negative mindset that before long you'll enter into uh, something that he calls uh, a confirmation bias. And uh, in other words, you'll expect something bad, therefore you'll get what you expect. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell y'all. So when you're trying to speak life, but because you've been negative for so long and your viewpoint's off, you keep finding negative things in your life because that is your confirmation bias. Okay, let me use it in a, bit, uh, a, 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 a better sense So, because somebody's rejecting what I'm saying right now because y'all want to be called negative. I got you. No, no, I got to do it. Let me flip it. No, I got to flip it because some people are like, that ain't me. I know so-and-so be doing that, but not me. Let me flip it. Hold on. You know you ever want a car or something, and you want a particular car, and so you start thinking about that car or you start thinking about that thing, and then all of a sudden, the thing you're asking for or wanting starts popping up everywhere. I mean, you're like, oh, I didn't, look at that car. That's the same car I want. That's the car I want. Or, or that's what I want. And we're not talking about online because we know they do that intentionally, put it on the side. I'm not talking about that. Uh, they, are, they fix this. So once you do a Google search, then that stuff starts popping up. No, I'm talking about there's a confirmation bias that when you want something, now the thing you want you keep seeing everywhere. That's the positive. Flip it on the other side, you do the same thing. 
Watch this. Confirmation bias happens in the same way. There's a problem here because we do this so much we don't realize it. Um, I better give some better examples. I heard some women say, all men of the losers. I heard all men are jerk or all men are dog. There is a preconceived idea that you have met that the moment you have made that declaration that you will find something bad in every man you meet. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me get off women. I get off women. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I get off women. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I bet you know. Uh, I, 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 maybe we, for men, uh, you know, you have you have uh, consistently said some negative things about women, and now you're trying to figure out how you can find a good one. When the truth of the matter is, you have a pre preconceived bias that has set it up so your viewpoint points off. So that's why you keep finding the same woman. Same man, same friends. So, oh, okay, I better move on. So it, you, some people find it easier to be negative than positive. Can I just, can I help someone? I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a theological, uh, a, a major theological statement here. It's going to blow your mind what I'm about to tell you, but I'm going to help shift your negative to positive. I'm going to give you the word, the thing that ultimately is going to shift everything for you. It's going to give you a new viewpoint. Watch this. Here it is. Write it down. Get ready. Here it is. Stop it. <laughs> oh, yes. Was that deep? Did you catch that? Was that deep? Stop it. Theologically stop it. Mentally stop it. Physically. Just stop it. Because your viewpoint's off because you've been negative. See, confirmation bias interprets circumstance based off of preconceived ideas. That means, God, please touch my mind so I can think differently. Okay, uh, uh, let's, let's go back into scripture. There was a problem with the Israelites. They were negative when they were in captivity. So they were negative when they were free. Because their negative mindset trained them to be even more negative, this was very incredibly dangerous. So when they got free, they stayed in the wilderness longer than they should because what happened in captivity. Could I just say something for someone parenthetically that, that hopefully help you? If you've been negative all your life, you got a lot of work to do, but you can do it with Jesus Christ. You have to work at being positive. Watch this. I, I, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you. I'll teach you. I'll teach you. If you can change your circumstance, do something about it. There it is. Here it is. I'm giving it to you. Well, how, how do I stop being negative? If you can change something, do something about it. Okay, let, let's go scripture. Uh, Nehemiah chapters 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to sum it up in a very quick state. No, here it is real quick. You have to recognize Nehemiah goes and figures out that the walls are jacked up to his hometown. He realized there's no protection. He didn't complain about it. He didn't complain. He said, this is the worst thing. Oh, my gosh, they're so vulnerable. Oh, my, he didn't do any of that. He was bothered by it. He did something about it. I summed up a number, uh, Nehemiah 1, 2, and 3, just like that. And he basically said, if there's something, if there's something that you don't like, Something that gives you a, what I call, let's call it righteous dissatisfaction. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying righteous dissatisfaction. I'm using that term because it, it spawns you to do something good for God, to bring glory to God. That's what I'm calling righteousness, righteous dissatisfaction. I'm changing it up like that. Watch this. If there is, here, I got another word for you. If there's godly discomfort, okay, okay. If there's something you look at and say, this isn't right, on behalf of God, stop complaining about it and do something about it. See, when you change your viewpoint, you'll see right, and you can change your vision to shift right. Because what you see determines what you desire. And so many people, if you can't, can, let, me help you, let, me, let me help you. If you can't change your circumstance, change your view. I mean, if you can't change it, then shift your viewpoint, uh, 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 perspective. Change your perspective. Let me help you there. Uh, uh, so many times um, uh, when I'm looking at circumstances and situations, I have to do something really important or else it will, it, I will go over the board and it'll make me so angry. So what I have to do is I have to put myself in the other person's shoes. 
And when I shift into their shoes, I try to see why they did the dumb thing they did. I'm sorry, that's bad. That's not the right way to say it. Don't, don't, don't share that on. No, no, hold on, hold on. Let me, excuse me, let me rephrase that. I have to shift myself, my viewpoint, so I can understand their mentality in the midst of a situation so my mouth don't speak my, my, the way I see it, my mouth will have understanding attached to it. Did I say it better? Okay, okay, good. Watch this. When I, let, let's, let's go back to the text. So, so, so Philippians 2, let's go back to Philippians for a second. Could I jump down to the, to the 17th verse of Philippians 2? Because if you can remember, he's chained to a Roman soldier, right? Y'all with me? He's awaiting his very possible execution. He, his dream was to preach the gospel in Rome, but now he's locked up in prison. And then he says something that blew my mind. He says, but even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering on a sacrifice and service comes from your faith, he said, I'm glad and rejoice with all of you, so you too should be glad and rejoice with me. So he said, I might, I might die. I might, I might be being poured out, but get happy with me. Okay, okay, let me explain a little further. The Greek word for, for this, this, this phrase, he says, even though I'm being poured out, the Greek word is a spindo, S-P-E-N-D-O, spindo. And it's the word meaning spend it all. So when he was saying this in the Greek, he would say spend it all. Let me give you an understanding. When the priest would, would what he would do is, when he was going to offer a sacrifice up to God, maybe a lamb or, or some type of animal, he would put in a burnt offering, uh, he would set it up, and then he would take a drink offering. The drink offering would be some type of expensive liquid. It could have been some alcohol, but chances are it was also some, uh, some, some, some um, honey. It was honey uh, oftentimes. And when I began to do research, and what happens was it would be burning, and they would pour the drink offering on the fire, and what would occur was smoke would go up, and that smoke would be an incense or a smell to God. Why, why am I telling you that? Because when Paul says this, he, he was declaring the same thing to us in Romans 12. He says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. He says, which is your spiritual act of worship. So worship wasn't just lifting my hands. It was me being a drink offering. It was me burning myself so I don't do what I want to do. God, what do you want me to do? That means I got to change my viewpoint. See, Paul, well, let's go back to the text. And I, 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 I'm, I'm so tempted to say this, and I'm going to say it. Viewpoint will turn your failure into just an opinion and not an event. Too many people make their failures into an event. And then when someone speaks about it, you all ticked off at them. Because you have viewed it in the wrong context. And so because of that, now your mouth starts speaking stuff based off of a horizontal viewpoint and not a vertical viewpoint. The vertical viewpoint causes me to say, that's just your opinion. My failures make me. My failures design me. My, fail my failures help me be better. If I did not fail all those other times, I could not be who I am today. Some people got to get their viewpoint so you stop thinking that you were a failure when it was just an opinion of a moment. Okay, I, I, all right, all right, let, let's close, let's close. I'm at my time. So Paul says, he says three things in the text that we're reading that you should be working on for viewpoint that should mark a child of God. He says you should be blameless, innocent, and above reproach. Right? What did he say? Blameless, innocent, and above reproach. Let me, let me go quickly through this. So blameless. So blameless has to do with an outward observation behavior. This is important because this is where your attitude and your actions line up. A attitude determines action. What, is what did I say? Attitude determines so here's the thing. When it comes to blameless, I got to check my attitude at the door. Some of us, your viewpoint, you don't see you sometimes, but when somebody tells you your attitude's off, they're looking from a viewpoint that obviously you can't see. So when someone speaks and says your attitude's off, 
You're like, I, no, I'm fine. No, you're not. I have a different viewpoint than you. And so our mouths are going, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. No, you're not. Because a part of being blameless is people have to see, they're seeing your outward appearance and it's indicating what's on the inside of your heart. So the heart's speaking because there's an issue on the inside. You might not be saying it, but the part of blameless is check your outward appearance. So that means I got to look at my outside. I got to look at how I'm acting. Look, here's the thing. Daniel, if you want to look at examples, Daniel was blameless. His outward, they knew they could not get Daniel, so they said we got to get him against his God because his outward appearance stayed the same all the time. Okay, I got to move. I got to move. Y'all catching this? Okay, watch this. The second thing is innocent. He said, be innocent. This word, this word focus on the inside. This is inward focus. This is uh, where's your, your root of your behavior on the inside. And so we, that means that this is my thought life between me and God. This one is, innocent is, you only you know if you're innocent. You and God. Because some of y'all have thoughts and... Ah... Uh, I don't know what you're thinking. You and God knows. And so when he says be innocent, he says, I got to take every thought into captivity and bring it into the obedience of God so that my viewpoint is that I'm innocent and I can stand and say, yes, I serve God. Yes, I'm right. Yes, I, I can say it because God knows what's on the inside as well. All right, let me, let me wrap up. Let me wrap up. So y'all catching this? It's okay? All right. So then the final thing he says, is above reproach. And I wrestled with this because this is, um, he's, this is a word that means without blemish. And I said, God, that's impossible. Above, but then I found out when I looked a little further in that this word is interesting. It came from the word, uh, uh, I'm not going to talk, it's not mama, it's amoma, amoma, A-M-O-M-A. And it was a Greek word that, uh, they, that meant, um, it was a, a Greek god. His name was Momus. Momus was a, uh, in Greek mythology, he was a, a god that, um, that, that, this is the word that they utilized, and um, he was a god of complaining. <laughs> Momus was the, was the god of complaining. And so he found fault with everybody and everything. So, um, so Paul, when he says uh, to be above reproach, he was using the opposite of Moma. So he basically said, um, you, you, when he says above reproach, meaning without complaint. So he says without blemishing. I, that's why he says in all things, he's saying without complaint. So Paul says our testimony should be that we're not complainers. So when he talks about being above reproach, he's saying that when I meet up with this person, they've never complained. They've always, if you needed something from them, they're there for you. If you needed to go, they were there. People will not trust your God because you question whether or not he's good. No, you, you have so, much, so many complaints, and so when they look at it, even though he delivered you from sin, even though he keeps saving you, even though there's mercy, uh, his mercy is new every morning, even though you see his power working, even though he led you through wilderness situations, I'm just talking for myself, trials, situations, and then every now and then, if I could talk to the, the people who like to complain just for a minute, every now and then you get your viewpoint wrong. And you're looking from a viewpoint that you, you're looking at your situation and you keep complaining about the same stuff that God says, I, I, I put you through this to make you, not to break you. I'm, I'm allowing you to go through this so that you can be uh, blameless, uh, innocent, and above reproach. What you're in right now in this season is a shaping aspect. Can you still give God glory, be a poured out drink offering, an act of worship while going through things that you don't like? Whew. All right, I'm closing. This is it. Give me two seconds here. Two minutes. If you can't change negative circumstances, I'm help somebody write this down. If you can't change negative circumstance, change your viewpoint. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but life might be difficult, 
if you can change something, do it. If you cannot change something, change your perspective. Choose not to just look at what's wrong. Choose to look at what is right. Choose to look at what is good. Choose to look at the grace. Choose to see his power. Choose to see his goodness. Choose to experience his forgiveness. Choose to let the Holy Spirit carry you where you're weak. It says his strength is made perfect in your weakness. Let everything I am praise the Lord. Let everything I give glorify him. Let me close with this. Uh, Psalms 103, 2 and 5. Paul says something, I mean, David, excuse me, says something really interesting. He said, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good thing he does for me. Can I stop there for a second? Y'all knew, know David had a lot, he complained a lot in his Psalms. No, I mean, he complained, but he got to the end and started worshiping. He started him off sometimes, he'd be a little rocky. He'd be like, oh, da, da, da. And he, he, it wasn't the model that we're looking for, but he would start off one way, but about midway in, he said, oh, that I magnify the Lord. He would make the problem clear, but then he said, oh, but the answer is my worship. The answer is glorifying God. And he said, watch verse 3, he forgives all my sins, heals all my diseases. He renders me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercy. He fills my life with good things. I like the way David put this. To me, this is so powerful because David had a lot he did, could complain about. He had a lot of different things. But the moment that he would glimpse into God's goodness, and the moment he would say, let all that I am praise the Lord. If you want to get your viewpoint right, let all that you are praise the Lord. Some of you, I hope you remember this. See his goodness in your life right now. I hope you remember this. When you start looking on people that aren't doing, living up to the thing that you want them to live up to. They, they, they're just not, they, they, it just seems like, I, I don't know if y'all got this. The people around you don't seem to add up to the place that you want them to add up to. And so now you got this viewpoint that you might not, you can't stand them in this area. I'm not saying you don't love them. It's just that I wish they would do this. Change your viewpoint, but watch this. What you can change, have a conversation. What you can change, change. What you can't change, change your viewpoint. So you can shift and stop going through this negative mouth talk that's causing for a lack of ability for a heart talk. Because you're affecting your heart. And to the point where now you have confirmation bias. You keep identifying negative stuff in the midst of a situation. My prayers for you today, I hope this helped you, is that you would make a decision with your big mouth to change your viewpoint. Too much of what we're saying, we're letting get into our hearts. And out of our hearts are coming the issues of our lives. And so I need to change my viewpoint. What is the thing I need God to do today? God, help me change my viewpoint. Can I pray with you today? The hardest thing in the world is to correct you. Because oftentimes we can't see us. We can't see the, how we're responding to stuff. But the fact of the matter is, there's a shift in order. God is without question preparing you in this season. And I pray you receive what he's doing in this season. Don't, don't, don't miss this opportunity of preparation with your attitude, your actions. We're going to come out of this. And so much is going, nothing will be the same. That means that God, you're changing stuff, change me too. I want to be different when I come out of this. I want to be better. I want to be right with him, but also I want my mouth to line up because we're coming into days. Uh, Bishop McLaughlin, he's been sharing from the, the apocalyptic gospels, revelations. I, was, I got into a little bit of it. And he was talking about the end time. If we got into the end times right now, some of y'all would quit being Christians. And I mean, I'm talking about, no, no, I'm just talking about the oppressive nature when those, that, the eyes and the different things that has to happen. So you are in preparation mode to be able to handle the weight of what people may say 
so you have a viewpoint of heaven, not here. I want to pray for you that God would change your viewpoint. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who are watching this, those who are here in the room. Help us in our viewpoint to consider those things that have come that may be negative, those things that may feel like they're stressing us out, the times where our attitudes seem to be rolling, riding a roller coaster that we can't get off. God, I pray now that you would change our viewpoint in our hearts, that our mouths would confess your goodness, that our mouths would declare that you are God and you are God alone. And no matter what I'm going through, you are sit on the throne and you have all power in your hand. So transform us. Change our thought life, our heart life. Change my mouth, Lord. May I speak what you want me to declare in this season. And God, I pray now that doubt would leave the believer's life, oh God. And maybe, Lord, there's someone that's watching this that they're not saved. Maybe they've been falling in the trap of continually doing the same thing over and over again, and they want to break the cycle. Today is your day. Today is the day that you would just make a confession with your mouth, that you would believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sin, that you would, today you would make a confession and say, you know what? God, restore me, renew me, forgive me of my sins. Today's that day. If you would make that confession, if you would believe in your heart, and you would declare that Jesus is Lord of your life, today you would be saved. It doesn't stop there. Now you have to do some work. Now you have to connect in and learn. I'm still learning this thing, y'all. I'm still learning. And so we're all still growing and developing. And so I want to encourage you to go to our website, click on Triumphant Life NJ, say, I'm new here. I'm just giving my life to Christ or I'm rededicating my life. Or if you're on Facebook, just say, I'll just go to Messenger and say, hey, I'm new here. I'm making some changes in my life right now. Thank you for this word. I want to encourage you to share, like, send it to someone else that you don't need to hear it. But make, make sure you deal with yourself first. Don't say, oh, I know who this is for. Before you do that, check you and allow God to do the rest. And so, God, we thank you even now and seal every bit of what we shared on today in the hearts and the minds of those who hear it, that, God, they will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, God bless you. I pray that it helped you tremendously. Um, it helped me. If it didn't help you, I, I grew right in the middle of writing it. I thank the Lord for what he's going to do in your life. I pray that you would allow the word to shift your viewpoint in this season. Uh, I don't know when we're coming out of this, but what I do know is your viewpoint should shift while you're in this. And so God will do something great. Hey, do me a favor. Once again, if you are um, a visitor here, thank you so much. Put it there. Let us know that you visited with us today. We'd like to connect with you through our experience. Go to triumphalifenj.org. But also if you're a mother and you're watching this and you miss us sharing it, please let us know right away. We want to be able to get a gift to you. You have to go to our website as well, Triumph for Life NJ, and go and click on the Mother's Day experience. It's going to have your name and your address and your phone number. Now, look, we're in the Mom County area, so we're only going to be servicing that area right now. I hope all of the mothers that got a little something sweet from us, uh, we thank you so much and we appreciate each one of you. And also, if you're joining us and uh, you want to sow a seed, this message blessed you and it's your first time you're watching saying, so you know what, I enjoyed this. I encourage you to give right now. They're going to put up there for you just uh, ways to give, an opportunity, the ways you can give. There's several ways you can text give. You can give through um, our online experience. And so, or you can mail it in to 500 Malteria Avenue, uh, uh, Oceanport, New Jersey. And I encourage you to, uh, to give. Giving is a, a principle that's in the Bible, that when I give, there's a harvest always connected to my seed. It's the same principle that's in our word, that will, God will bless you and uh, open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. So thank you even now for your donation. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for those who are already tithers at uh, Triumph for Life, and you already know what to do. Please, once again, join us at 1 o'clock for our Zoom, for our youth experience. We thank the Lord for each uh, opportunity we get to give uh, to, uh, to be a part of our Zoom experience and to connect. All right, some news is going to follow this. Thank you so much for joining us. Triumph for Life is a place for people just like you where we love God, love people, and serve the world. Thank you so much for joining us.